Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to episode 45 of the Physique Development Podcast. Today's all about show day for competitors. So everything you need to know about show day. And we're going to hop right into it. So I'm going to hand it over to Sue and Alex, and they're going to kick it off. Perfect. So this is part three in our series of what to know as a first time competitor. And show day is definitely something that a lot of people get really nervous about going into. And rightfully so. You've worked very hard for this moment. And so you want to be the most prepared. I know for physique development clients, we have a packing list. Um, We talk through their whole schedule and have all of that hammered out so they feel the best going into the show. Um, But we're going to kind of talk through a few things as far as when you should arrive, what you should do for your tan prep, how you should communicate with your coach if you just might not know, or possibly your coach might not have certain organizational things in place. And so being able to have have your own idea of how show day is going to go. So in the first part of this series, we did talk about how important it is to go to a show. And this is another thing that it'll be very helpful to understand the flow of a show, especially if you have a friend competing in a show, that'll give you even more insight as far as what show day is actually like. And I guess the main theme of show day is hurry up and wait. So it is get up and go at 3 a.m. for your makeup sometimes. And then it's a lot of sitting around. So as long as you know that that's going to be what show day is, that already puts you ahead of the game. That already makes things a lot easier because you know it's just hurry up and wait. And that's okay because that's basically how all show days go. So getting started here, we'll go ahead and talk about when you should arrive for a show. So we recommend arriving one to three days before a show. And this is going to depend on if you're switching time zones or switching climates, um, as well as your personal routine and being in tune with you. Hopefully, by the time you've gotten to show day, you understand how you need to set yourself up best for success. So for example, if I'm going to a different time zone, I'm probably going to be arriving three days early, if not more because I know my body takes time to acclimate. And same for a different climate, where if I were to go to a very hot or dry climate, I would definitely get there early because I know how my body responds to change in climate, to travel, whether I'm flying or driving. Um, But it's always going to be a smart idea to get there a few days before the show to get settled, to get into routine. Because one thing that we've seen for competitors, and Alex can speak on this once I finish up my sentence, is that you don't want to ruin your prep by making yourself way too stressed out going into this travel and trying to cut costs by not paying for the hotel for an extra night and then being so stressed going into show day because it will show on your body and it will be very, very hard to kind of reverse in that short period of time uh, and trying to get things set. So do you want to go ahead and talk about that just a little bit? Yeah. Um, so I think that the, the main thing is this is where the finances really come into play um, because individuals who are not planning accordingly, this is where it's like, it's almost inevitable that you have to cut corners because you're scraping the bottom of the barrel from a financial perspective. So this is the thing that you really want to plan for. And for our first time competitors, we make a a big point to focus heavily on just a show that's within an hour or two hours, probably of your, your home, just because these variables are very challenging to know. Like, I'm sure that you don't know how your physique is going to respond at very low body fat levels after a full day of travel, um, you know, potentially higher food consumption as you're loading carbs or what have you. So in that context, we want to get more data before we really, you know, gamble on that front of, of traveling seven, eight hours or being on multiple flights before getting on stage. So getting those regional shows in is going to be very important. Uh, but I, I do agree having the, as many days as you can afford or as many days as you can afford from like a, a work perspective, taking that time off to be there is going to be helpful and allowing for you to acclimate is, is massive. Yeah, because peak week, if you can take more time off of work or switch around so you have more downtime in general, that's only going to benefit you, not only for the stress response and then the recovery response, um, but also from the fact of you are having to be very stringent with timing as far as your food timing, when you're sending pictures. Um, And like Alex mentioned, which I I wasn't even, I didn't even have in my notes, but it's a phenomenal point of how you're going to digest your food if maybe you have to load food and you're 
you're on a flight um, and not walking throughout the day and you're used to getting movement in and your digestion rocking and rolling and now you're in this place where you're like, I need to eat all these carbs that I haven't had before and I'm stuck on a plane and I feel very uncomfortable. So taking those into consideration is going to be huge. And another thing is is understanding your personality. If you're high strung, the aspect of getting on a flight and like cutting it really close, not a really good idea. I mean, if you feel like somebody who doesn't go with the flow very well, and when your calories are low, body fat's low, um, the likelihood that you're a little bit more on edge is pretty high. <laughs> so I would avoid any of the scenarios and give yourself that extra time um, because like Sue said, the stress is going to accumulate very quickly and it's going to show on your physique much more than you would assume. Um, so just being mindful of those factors of, of your personality and, and truly how you're responding to situations. Yeah. And so going into the show day a little bit more before we go into the schedule of show day, talking about a few things with your tan, because I know this is something that I personally messed up my first show um, and I've only gotten better and better. Um, so it is also going to be something where possibly even if you do all the steps right, the tan might not sit perfectly on your skin. So taking note of what the tanning company is, how you did things going into the show is going to be important. But the last day to shave, absolute last day is Thursday. I normally try to finish up shaving on Wednesday. The reason for that is shaving is going to cause micro inflammation. And even though it might seem so small, when it comes to the end of all of this, those small, small things really do add up. So having your last day shaving being Wednesday or Thursday is going to be very large. Um, if you are someone who you're like, oh, the day after I shave, like there's hair back, you uh, do want to be as much of a naked mole rat as possible when it comes to your tan. Things are just going to be better on your skin. But it is something where there's also things like nair and waxing that can help to help with that longevity of the shaving if you don't feel like the shave is going to last you and you would need to shave the day of or before your tan. But within nair and waxing, do not do it your first time as you're prepping for stage do it earlier on in the prep and test it out because you never know how your skin is going to react. And that's going to be a huge thing of using products that you're familiar with so that you don't have irritation to your skin. You don't have redness. You don't have bumps. You don't have things like that. Um, the last day to exfoliate while you're talking about your tan is going to be Thursday because again, exfoliation, if you're scrubbing at your skin can cause that inflammation. And we want all that inflammation to fall off. And you need to be extremely on top of your moisturizing. And I'm not just talking, hey, yeah, I, I use lotion. Like you want to be buttered up like the whole week, if not the whole month leading into the show. That is going to help your tan so much. I used to think I was doing enough until I actually started to moisturize a lot more frequently. And my spray tans, like just my normal spray tans, not competition tans, even stay on so much better. They look so much better. Um, and it's going to be very helpful. So we're going to talk through the routine of the day, um, what your coach needs and what that looks like, as well as what to do even right before you go to your tan. Um, but Austin, do you have anything you want to add on about the things that we've talked about? Um, I, I think if you're at this point and you're like, wow, that's, that's a lot. And I don't <laughs> know if it's worth all that. <laughs> Honestly, I promise you it's worth it because yeah. me being, and you know, Based off of, you know, everything Sue said so far, everything Alex said so far about travel, not being stressed out, prepare, I'm a very laissez-faire person and meaning I'm very like relaxed, go with the flow, like whatever happens, happens, We're, we'll get there, it's fine. All that to be said, show day was still, it's still a very stressful day and that's coming from me and travel <laughs> too, especially if you're on a plane, st stressful. If you're yeah. traveling in a car, long distance, stressful right and so all these little things you know and and from my first show to my last show you know i remember my first show it was like hey you should probably be there and you're still at home that's one thing and two <laughs> you haven't shaved that's true <laughs> my brother asked me hey do you have to shave and i was like oh, oh um yeah. i think so he's like have you shaved you still have armpit hair and i'm like oof <laughs> I have not shaved, you know? So it's one of those things that you just sort of get used to it and, and you prepare over time. But if you, it is your first show, trust me, unless you've experienced it with a close friend, you've stayed with a friend, or you've been to a show day very intimately, you don't quite understand 
the flow of the day. And that's why I think this, this episode is really important, especially for competitors here. But if you've gotten to this point, the main thing I wanted to say here, if you've gotten to this point and you're like, oof, they're pretty, they're pretty intense. This is pretty detailed. I promise you, the more you just let this sink in and take it to heart and like take it seriously, the easier your life is going to be in every step of the way. And as we, you know, talked about on throughout all, you know, now three of these episodes is you've done all this work to get to this point, just finish, mm -hmm. finish strong. And this is, you're basically doing a beauty pageant, right? Male or female. So at the end of the day, right, it's a beauty pageant with muscles, right? So it's like at the end of the day, it does matter how you look and it does matter how you present yourself. And all that's going to be wrapped up in how stressed you are, how your travel went, how much you prepared for the tan, which again is such a big part of the the such on stage look part. and appearance. Massive. Such a big Completely part, right? Completely change, or make or break your placing. <laughs> yeah, it, it, like I've had a shit tan before. You know, I've had a really bad uh, color. I've had to get it fixed. I've had to, you know, and that all of that plays into this, right? And you never know. And this is the last thing I'll say. You never know what your triggers are going to be on show day, the days before. You don't know what's going to set you off. You don't know what, and not like you're throwing chairs out the hotel window, but like set off in terms of like a stress response, right? Mm -hmm. A massive stress response, again, plays into your digestion, plays into water retention, plays into how you're going to look as a whole, how you may sleep that night, right? Which plays, it governs everything. And I'm not saying these things to stress you out. I'm just saying, take this preparation stuff very seriously. And if you're not organized in any other part of your life, I promise you, if you have a partner or a close friend that you could like hire, you know, or like, <laughs> hey, I'll pay for your travel if you organize this stuff for me, make sure I'll have everything packed. Like, I promise you do it because it's gonna make your life so much easier and it's gonna make all that hard work you did over the last umpteen months that much more worth it and better and and more worthwhile. So just take this stuff seriously. And I just wanted to kind of say that before we move on, because it can be intense. Yeah. And the the judges take this extremely seriously. If you're like, oh, this kind of stuff is like silly to me or whatever it may be, that's fine. If you feel that way personally, that is completely fine. But that will affect your placing. It will affect how your physique looks. And it will affect, especially if you're wanting to compete in the sport long term, how judges view you based on how you respond Um in regards to like your respect for the sport and how it's set up. Um, it's set up that you have to get all these things on point and they might seem like, well, I did it. My physique looks great. I shouldn't have to worry about posing or tan or my hair or my makeup. I did the physique part. It's like, it's not just the physique part. It's the whole package, especially with bikini. Um, so going into kind of what it looks like for what your coach is going to need for show day um, and what you need to need, know about show day, because if you don't have these times, then that's even uh, a little bit crazier. But your coach is going to need your check-in time, um, and we'll talk through check-ins here in a second, your tan time in the evening and in the morning the order of events for the show, what time zone the show is in, the show start time for prejudging and finals, your number for your show, um, your makeup and your hair time, um, and then any other important pieces of information <laughs> they are going to need to know. So these might all seem like um, a little bit tedious, but your coach does need to know all of these, not only to make the best calls for the protocol, but also so that they can time things correctly. If they're going on the fly and they're like, well, I didn't know you had hair and makeup at this time because you didn't vocalize it or they didn't ask whatever it may be. Again, that can set off a stress response that can mess up the timing of a game plan. So be very, very organized within these things and have them down for your own sanity as well of knowing exactly what time things are at. So you can kind of go backwards of, okay, if my makeup is at this time and I need to send pictures to my coach as soon as I wake up, then I need to wake up at this time in order to have a bowel movement and then send my pictures and then have time to get to my hair and makeup. It is going to be a day where you have to be on top of your schedule, even if you do have to spend a lot of time waiting. If you're not on top of it, things can go very wrong very quickly. And that is really only your responsibility. 
Yeah. Uh, schedule is, is massive. I think that that is the one thing that is so frustrating from a coaching perspective is that if you're setting up protocols and then they've left out details, whether it be the hair and makeup, it be tan, it be, um, just kind of any, like you should assume that the coach knows nothing. I don't know anything of your day. I need to know every, you tell me like I'm four years old, exactly what's going on today so that we're on the same page and that there's nothing that's under assumption whatsoever. Even if your coach is at the location, because your coach may have multiple clients there and trying to organize those things. I know that for myself on show day, when we have multiple athletes, I have 9 billion alarms going off when different (laughs) times for things are, are transpiring. So, um, just be very, very vocal with the the different circumstances and assume nothing if you don't know ask that's yeah. the biggest thing i i learned if you don't know ask someone and someone's going to tell you someone is employed that day there's a lot of people employed that day depending on how big the show is to make sure that thing runs as smooth as possible right because those promoters of those shows have a lot to lose if that show doesn't go smoothly right so <laughs> there are people there to ensure that you know exactly what you're doing and if you don't know no you need to ask Right. And it's not that intimidating. Trust me. Just yes. ask. <laughs> um, so in regards to showing up to the show early, because we're about to talk about the day of the show, it is something like, for example, we went to in 2020, we went to South Carolina for my show. I think we are there two or three days early. We got there. We had just a day of getting in routine, getting our our like everything ready, going to the grocery store, getting to the gym, all of that stuff down, um, which was so helpful going into the show. And I also knew where everything was. So I kind of walked around as far as where is the tan at? Where is my makeup going to be at? Where is the actual show at? And so we were able to know exactly where everything was days before the show and feel so prepared going into it. So when it comes to the day before the show, so one day before the show, let's go ahead and for example's sake, go ahead and just assume a show is on Saturday. Most shows are, um, but they can shift on different days. So when we talk about things, we'll say like Friday, Saturday, just so it makes it clear. So day before show, it's Friday. You'll normally have check-ins. And so within this, they will send out a sheet or an email beforehand, or maybe when you get to the hotel room, it'll have it. And it'll say when each person's, not each person, each division's check-in is. So it'll be like bikini check in between 615 and 645 men's physique between this time and this time. And it's very important to know that because oftentimes your tan is that evening around those times as well. So you will be scheduling your tan time well before your show because you should have already paid for your tan before the show. And so within that, it is something of being able to, if you don't know what time your check-in is, you can always default to going later in the evening for your tan because that's not going to hurt because that gives you also less time to fuck up your tan um, if you go later in the evening. But um, just making sure that you have those times down. So when you go to the check-in, you need your ID and you need your NPC card. The NPC card you can have printed out, and especially if that helps you for organization's sake, or you can just show it on your phone, but you will have needed to already have purchased an NPC card before you get to the show. Some shows will let you purchase it there, but to be safe, have it beforehand. You can purchase it online, super duper easy. And then you need your photo ID. And then if you are a bikini competitor, bring your bikini bottoms just in case. Oftentimes, especially at regional shows, but also um, national shows too, they will have you show your bikini bottom to see if it's appropriate. Because if you have already bought a suit or looked at suits, you'll see for the bottom, there's cover, it's for cover, coverage from moderate to micro pro cut, which is basically a G string. Um, that is a little bit more, um, with a little bit more structure. And so, which is mostly, it is only for pros. Yeah. It is only for pros for that micro pro cut. Um, and honestly for the pro cut as well. And often regional shows will not allow those smaller cuts, um, at all. So they will need you to bring your bikini bottoms And you can wear whatever you like. Some girls like to dress up, some girls and guys. I'm not going to, you know, discriminate. Um, Some people like to dress up and like to look cute because oftentimes they will have a backdrop and you can take a picture with your photo. I normally go in full grunge mode because I've either just gotten my tan or I'm going to my tan and I don't want marks on my clothes or on my body from my clothes. Um, And that's another important thing we'll talk about within your tan. Um, so it's something that you also would want to wear shoes that slide on or off. 
The reason for this is they do take your height. They do not weigh you. Um, this is not a weight competition. No one will ever know what weight you are on stage. Yeah. For Male me. divisions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, um, so you want to bring slides because they will measure your height. And so you want to make sure they get an accurate height. So being able to kind of push off your shoes real quick, um, and make it easier transition for you as well. Let me clarify that male divisions will have weight caps. Female divisions are not going to, I, I didn't finish my sentence there, but, yes. um, that was what we were alluding to. The other thing that I will say with the check-ins is that, um, one thing that some first time competitors run into is that they start to see some of the other girls that are there competing and they start to think of, Oh, you see that this person has maybe some bigger delts than you, or maybe bigger glutes from your perspective. That is not going to do any good for you in that moment to try and size up the competition. You're already there. Your look is, is what your look is going to be. And you need to bring your best physique to the stage. It is a, a very big, big piece here to not add extra stress by focusing too much on, on who's around you and who's competing as well. And, and I think that this goes with social media. And so th like both are, are going to be in conjunction, but with us talking about the check-in time, I think this is very important to not get caught up in the other competitors, focus on yourself very heavily because the work is done and you're going to present your best look the following day. Um, whether, you know, Becky, who's going to be a pro tomorrow is there or, you know, whoever's there, it just, you're going to be up there at your best tomorrow. Yeah. And with that, the tan is probably the hardest part in regards to when I was a first time competitor of not having those comparisons, um, because you are butt ass naked in a room and you oftentimes depending on the setup of the room can clearly see the other women and or men in there also butt ass naked and it, just to clarify that women are with women yes. men are with men <laughs> sue's not saying that women could see men naked at that yes <laughs> i <vice> apologize <laughs> that was you know a, an assumption that i drew <laughs> that if you're talking to your coach don't tr be drawing those don't think they know everything yeah you will be in separate rooms for men and women and women you will be having women um spray tan yes. you you will not be having men spray tan you. So you do not have to worry about that aspect, but you are still in a room full of women yeah. all naked. And so it's something that it's very easy because you can see everything to be like, oh man, they look really good or they look this way. But first, how they look at night does not determine how they will look in the morning. And it does not determine how they will look on stage. You have no idea how their posing is. You have no idea how they're peaked. You have no idea how any of that's going to go. So if you start tripping yourself out, like Alex said, you're doing your, you're literally just making yourself worse and making them better. Um, and then the other aspect of that is especially during that check-in and tan time, a lot of the girls will start talking. And I say girls because I'm talking about my experience. So Alex and Austin can weigh, here, weigh in here in a second. They'll start talking about their protocols, what their coach had them do, what they're eating, all of that. Do not freaking listen to it. Only pay attention to what the game plan is and what your coach has laid out because there are girls in there talking, ah, oh, I haven't had peanut butter in six weeks or I haven't had carbs and I didn't have water today or I had 300 carbs today and you see they look freaking shredded and all these different things. Each person's body is different. Each peak is different. Some coaches know what they're doing. Some coaches don't know what they're doing. There's a lot going on. The more that you can focus just on yourself, the better off that you will be. Yeah, I'll keep mine short. Um, from my experience within this whole, like what we just talked about with the check-in process, seeing other competitors in that, in that scenario, getting their tan, getting checked in. I have beaten many people who I psyched myself out from, you know, I, I completely psyched myself out, you know, in front of these people during the tan or during the check-in process of like, oh my God, this dude's huge. He's shredded. There's no way I'm going to beat this guy. And usually beat all of them, right? Yeah. And it has to do, you know, not not the, always the case here because again, the more, the more you go on and, and whatever else. But from my experience, I, I more or less just want to say that because you will psych yourself out to some degree, right? You're going to see these people. You're going to overhear them. You're going to get psyched out and, and you have this inflated sense of, of what other people look like versus yourself too, right? And you see your flaws, you see their uh, 
<laughs> whatever the opposite, their, um, <laughs> yeah. their attributes, right? You right. see the best in them, you see the worst in yourself, right? And that, that becomes, that amplitude becomes heightened of those two things, especially when you feel a bit insecure, you don't have any clothes on really, and you're getting tanned up, like you're kind of in this, you know, standstill of a vulnerable experience. Um, and you have no time other than to just stand there and consider and think and like, oh, what are they doing? And you're probably gonna overhear them and whatever else, right? So also the last thing I'll say on that is the person who shows up with the best look on stage is the person who wins or gets a higher placing. It has nothing to do with how you looked leading into it. It has nothing to do with the selfies you took leading into the morning of the show. It has nothing to do with how sick you look on Instagram. It has nothing to do with any of that stuff, right? It has to do with who showed up and who looked best on stage at the allotted time you were supposed to look your absolute best. And that's the competition. So don't get psyched out. Yeah. That was perfect. But I guess I did say everyone's standing butt ass naked, but Alex, do the males <laughs> stand butt ass naked? So I sometimes. Have a funny story. I, <laughs> sometimes. I have a funny story there. <laughs> um, one thing I'll add to what Austin uh, had said is that uh, something I, I bring up to competitors is that the filters don't follow you up on stage from Instagram as well as the, the girls are not wearing the leggings that they had on in these uh, Instagram posts on stage. They, that is going to be their, their raw look there and you're not seeing their raw look, if you will, um, on Instagram. And for, for my first competition, so I had, I was painfully blessed in my first competition because Austin had competed a, a, a multiple times at that point. Austin had peaked me for that show specifically um, and had let me really miss out on a lot of the silly mistakes a lot of first competitors make because I had great guidance. And so going into my first tan, um, Austin had expressed to me that I just stripped down naked as we're talking about here and that's what I do. And so that's what within, I did. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And so for my first show, the tanning experience was a little different. We had gone to a tanning salon, which is not normal. Normally it's at like a hotel, um, but it was a smaller show. And so it was at like a, an offsite uh, tanning salon. And so they had these, these rooms with the tents that you'll be familiar with when you're competing. Um, but there would be multiple competitors. Maybe there was four to six competitors in there. And so they would call your number and you go back to these rooms. Well, I thought as soon as I got in the room, I didn't want to be like holding people up. I thought that I was, you know, it was going to move fast. And so it's me and at least three other guys. I don't know if it's five other guys, whatever. I immediately start tripping down naked as if I'm on fire. Like I am <laughs> <laughs> getting my clothes off as quickly as I can. And so these guys are not doing this. And I'm like, these guys have no idea. These are all first time competitors too. <laughs> these, these are all new. These are, yeah, Austin told me what I need to do. So I'm standing there completely naked for probably five to 10 minutes. The none of the tanning people are in there. All these other guys are just like not making eye contact with me. And I'm standing there naked. I'm like, I feel like I should be doing something different. This is not right. <laughs> and it's like, as every minute passes, I'm like, I feel like I'm doing this wrong. And then finally, one tanning lady finally comes in and she said, oh, honey, you need a sock. <laughs> And yeah, so there's I, yeah. there's there's socks you can wear um, <laughs> over your male parts, um, <laughs> or you can wear very small compression underwear, which is what I yes. graduated towards as I got older. Same and, here. Uh, maybe <laughs> and that is had a little bit more shame in my game. <laughs> what suit you're wearing on stage? Where like right, they were right. wearing board shorts right. on stage, so if they were able to pull their underwear down a little bit, so you wouldn't see the tan line or their board shorts laid, um, then they could definitely get away with wearing underwear. Yeah, and I think that story gets more funny understanding my personality of like <laughs> that is so not my personality to be like that. I guess rambunctious almost. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's like my one of my favorite competing stories that I get to tell. Yeah, and when you told it, I was thinking they give you like two socks <laughs> they give you I like mean, who we think we are here <laughs> normal just footies <laughs> which i always just get a laugh out of but <laughs> getting back to the check-ins yeah. um especially if you're a female you want to wear your hair down or in a low bun style because again they're trying to get your correct height if you have a huge bun on top of your head it can be very hard and they might put you in the wrong height class and that's also something to discuss a little further with your coach now i'm not gonna say that you should you know fake your height but you and your coach might have a conversation about how you need to show up to check-ins for your height as a whole. Um, that's what I'll say. 
Um, but when you check in, they'll give you your number. Um, and that's the number you'll wear on your bikini suit or on your board shorts or whatever. Um, and then if there is a swag bag, you'll get that there as well. And then sometimes they do a short meeting that day. Other times it'll be in the morning before the show starts. But I would recommend going if you're a first time competitor. It, it's something that they don't always give a lot of new info. And sometimes it can seem like it was pointless to go, but it'll help with your peace of mind. It'll help you feel prepared. And sometimes they do switch show order or they do switch timing. And so I do recommend going to this meeting. If it is in the middle of one of your appointments, like your hair or your makeup appointment, send someone to the meeting just again for your peace of mind. So if your significant other is there, if your friend is there, or whatever, just tell them to go to the meeting and take any notes. They might come back and say nothing changed. They just said, hey, but that's fine. You'd rather know than not know. And then what do we do next? We tell our coach what happened in the meeting and any changes to insight. Um, then going into a few other things within the tan is you'll moisturize for the last time the morning of your tan. And then um, right before you go to your tan, you will rinse off and use no product. You want no product on your skin. Do not try and put on lotion right before you go to the tan. That will mess up. It is a barrier to the tan. So you want to moisturize the morning of, make sure you get in your last good bit. But then as the day goes on, you get closer, say your tan's at 6.30 and you need to leave at 6.00 shower. Um, you don't need to shower your hair, but just wash your body with just water and don't put any other product on and do not put deodorant on. Yeah. It, it's your skin is going to feel unbelievably dry uh, relative to how it felt all week. It's going to be like throughout the week, your skin is probably going to be quite literally the healthiest that it's been in, in quite some time. I love how my skin feels the week of, <laughs> of peak week. Um, but then the, right before you go in for that tan, you're going to be like, holy balls, I feel like SpongeBob when he's like out of the water. Mm -hmm. Like you just feel like everything is, is suctioned. Um, but that's how, it's, how it should feel. Yes. Um, and then um, you'll go to your tan and you'll get that. Um, and within going to your tan, um, making sure you're wearing loose clothes. Do not wear things with like um, anything that would make an imprint on your skin. So don't wear socks um, that maybe like are tube socks and they they leave an imprint when you take them off. Don't be wearing anything that whole day that is really going to leave an imprint on your skin at all. Don't wear a bra that day if you can get away with it. Um, you do not want any imprints on your skin because that, again, can affect the tan. So I normally just wear a pair of baggy sweats, an oversized T-shirt with no bra, sometimes a sweatshirt on top. Um, and sometimes girls will already have their hair done the night before, and they'll just wear um, a shower cap to their tan, and that's perfectly fine. Um, and be good to go, but do not wear makeup to your tan. Um, and when they ask if you want your face tanned, just say you either want one coat or no coats on your face because the makeup artist will match your face to your body. It looks really bad when you have the full depth of the tan on your face, you not only look like you are doing blackface possibly, but it is very much so just not a good look um, for your face to be that dark as this dark as your skin needs to be. That goes for males and females, by the way, too. Like you don't, if you're a male listening to this, um, you know, obviously we're very female heavy in, in this podcast and kind of our whole company, but from a male perspective, we obviously still have males and we still coach males and Alex and I have competed as males. So <laughs> what I will say, what I will say is, um, you know, I was told a bunch of different stuff uh, over the years of, of you do this, do this for your face. And, and, you know, some males get makeup done. Some males don't, I never got my makeup done or my face done or anything like that. But what I did do is I always, I was told from the very beginning, I was really glad I did, was told this don't like either a one coat or a zero coat on your face. I would say if you're not going to get your makeup done as a male, get at least one coat because you want some color on your face. Like, especially as transparently pale as I am <laughs> and the rest of my body is like, we all are. <laughs> you know, I, I just spent a, a month on the equator. You know, you need some color on your face, right? <laughs> so there's going to be more questions if you don't, but don't have them do the full force three coats or whatever on your on your face. And a lot of the tanning people too understand this and, and sort of get this. But what the last thing I'll say here is 
don't leave anything up to assumption or guess. Tell them exactly what you want from them because they're also trying to get a lot done in a short amount of time. They're trying to get a lot of bodies in and a lot of bodies out. So they're trying to do their job as efficiently as possible. And they could just get into the swing of things and kind of forget about any requests that you made at the very beginning. So just reiterate throughout the entire experience, throughout the entire appointment of like, hey, remember, I just wanted the one coat on my face, right? So you could tell them at the very beginning. And then as they're making the way up your body, you can just say again, hey, just remember, I said at the beginning, I just, I just want one coat on my face. Thank you, right? Just repeat yourself as many times as you feel is necessary. And don't assume they remember or took note. And it's nothing on them. They're just super busy. And they have, they've seen a lot of people. They've gotten a lot of requests that day. So look out for yourself and, you know, obviously be polite, be a kind person, be patient, but do sort of overshare in that you want to be very detailed in exactly what you want from this, right? Because it's very hard to get that <laughs> remove an extra coat or two of spray tan, right? So um, just take note of that. Yeah. So going into the day of the show, Alex, do you want to talk through the what that day looks like starting off? Yeah. Before we get into that, the the night before, you and your coach should formulate a, a plan of, of what the morning is going to look like because um, I like to put this into place just so we have some expectations um, of, of what's going to transpire now. For our athletes, we get up with them, um, whether they are like – I know that last year I had competitors competing in the US and I also had them in Australia the same weekend. So I kind of pulled a 48 hour, no sleep <laughs> little window there. Super fun. I went to sleep. I let him yeah. suffer alone. Um, and we've done that with like clients in Dubai and then also being in the US, we've done that. Um, and so in that, we are very committed to, as you can tell, uh, being up with the athlete when they are up. And so uh, having a, a game plan for like that first meal and kind of how to start your day, because uh, let's say that your wake up is at four and I wake up at like 415. Well, there may be some things that you can get done in that 15 minute period before I wake up to look at things uh, that you can just get rolling with because like I'm not, you're not going to not drink water that morning. You're not going to not drink coffee potentially that morning. Those like like simple things, getting some steps in, those different factors that we can get situated. Um, and then the day of the show, uh, one thing that we do say to athletes is that we're best friends through Peak Week. We're very, <laughs> very hands on on that front, but even more so on show day. Um, we were, you know, sending pictures right when you wake up, uh, posing right when you wake up, uh, being very, um, open of, of how your digestion is, how you're feeling, where your mindset is at, those different factors, sharing all those things, again, leaving nothing to uh, assumption. Um, and generally for, for photos and things of that nature, as the show day goes, um, I try to do pictures like every 60 to 90 minutes after the consumption of meals and then just continuing to keep in line in those different factors. So be prepared to be consistently taking photos, being very vocal, texting those different factors. If you have a significant other there with you or a friend, have them get in contact with your coach as well to potentially take a little bit of, of time off of you. I know that having the uh, significant other there or the friend is going to be able to take photos for you to be able to communicate a little bit easier to where you can be in in your space because this is this is game day. Like if, if you're a former athlete, you're treating it just as that. As um, the day progresses, you want to have the, the focus. So keeping your mind state in the best place possible, not scrolling Instagram. That's not going to, nothing on Instagram at that moment is going to be beneficial. There's not one at thing all. that you could tell me that would be like, I should just scroll Instagram. Like if you want to to post things and, and you are keeping your followers in engaged or what have you, post and then let that be. Like there, there's no reason for you to sit there and, and allow for your followers to hype you up and, and put this um, as much as I want your, your following to, to hype you up and be kind and those different factors. You need to stay in your zone and, and keep in your, your positive mindset of where things are at. Um, and, and that doesn't need to be inflated by individuals who have really no idea necessarily what's going on. Mm -hmm. They just love you potentially and want to see you succeed, which is awesome. But at the same time, we don't need like this, this banter because I, I do see individuals who get this false inflation of, of looking a certain way from their following and then they get their ass kicked on stage and they're like, what the heck? And then they go to their following they're like, but I looked so good. It's like they weren't there and you didn't. 
Like that's just the, that's the, the raw facts. Um, that's a side tangent. Sorry. And pictures mean nothing. If you're at the show, I promise you, you it's normally very clear who did better. Um, pictures do not tell the whole story at all. Um, but within that kind of talking through that game plan for the night before the show, um, an example of that will be, Hey, my makeup's at 5 AM. So then we'll say, all right. So since the show starts at nine and you'll probably be on around 11, we want to get two or three meals in. So you're first meal needs to be before you go to hair and makeup. So you need to get up a little bit before then. I want you to have a bowel movement. So get up at this time, have this amount of water, have this amount of coffee, go get this amount of steps in, then send me pictures, then eat your meal, then go to X, Y, and Z. So that should already be planned. You should not be going to sleep, not knowing what the next morning step-by-step is going to look like. And within that, you are taking a lot of pictures and your focus is purely on yourself. Um, That's something that I did want to talk about in regards to show weekend as a whole. I understand if family is there, friends are there, other people are there, you want to feel like you want to spend time with them, whether you don't see them that often, or you're like, they just traveled for this, or they're spending their time at this. But please recognize that your focus should still be yourself. Now, you shouldn't be an asshole and say, hey, bye guys, I'm only going to focus on myself. I'm not going to talk to you at all today. But it is extremely important to continue to put yourself first because again, you've worked hard for this. You've spent the money for it. You've been through the hard and you just need to keep showing up for yourself for one more day. Um, And it's something that Um, you're going to need to take pictures and need to be on time. So bring a tripod, bring a ring light and make that your whole life for that week. And it will pay off. And for example, it's something that I've had a situation where I went to a show and then there was other people staying in my room. They went and did something the night before the show. They came back. They had disrupted my sleep. It was something that they didn't understand how early I had to get up. I was sneaking around where I should have just said, hey, I'm going to get my own room and this is going to be about me. And an example for Alex is that he had, when he was just talking earlier about financially, this is where people try to cut corners. He had spent a lot of money trying to get um, family and friends there and showing up. And um, he had really like put forward that. And then when it came to his peak and him needing to get food in, he was at the point where he was like, well, I don't really have the money to finish up for those groceries kind of thing. So the more that you can focus on what plan's going to set you up, but still vocalizing to the people that are there that you love and you care for them and you're excited that they're there, but don't feel like you need to set yourself aside because this is your moment that you've worked for and you do need to be a little bit selfish in that. Yeah. And and I think that some of the things that we talk about are are coming from our own experience of making these mistakes so that you don't have to. Um, So yeah, I I think that through our, all of our first preps and second prep and so on and so forth through the early stages, um, we made our fair share of mistakes and, and you may too. I mean, if you're working with physique development, I doubt it, but um, (laughs) (laughs) yeah. Inquire in the show notes. No. <laughs> um, so within prejudging, you're prejudging, and especially if we're talking about bikini, bikini normally goes last. Um, so if it is something where bikini, Prejudging starts at nine. You won't always have to go over to the venue exactly at nine. Sometimes the hotel is connected to the venue. Sometimes it's not. But um, it's something that, again, you'll discuss with your coach based on what the flow of the show is. And you might want to send someone over to kind of give you updates to have you continue to relax. So it's something where I've sent over and been like, hey, tell me when, even if they know nothing about bodybuilding, I'll just be like, tell me when they say men's physique is getting on stage or send me a picture of the stage and I'll know what division is on um, and what that looks like because they'll tell you what division it is. They'll tell you what class it is um, and they'll give you all that information if you're at the show. So if you feel calm enough and you have all of your stuff, you can go and watch the show and just kind of keep up with what all's going on. But otherwise you can send someone over And your coach will let you know what that needs to be for the speed of the show when you need to eat and what that looks like for getting over to the venue and then getting backstage and doing the pump up routine and all of that. Yeah. So within um, going backstage, bring a rolling bag. Do not bring a backpack or something that um, is like a duffel bag that goes over your shoulder because you have your tan on. You do not want to carry anything on your back or on your shoulder or in the crevice of your elbow or anything like that. So get some sort of rolling bag, whether it's a rolling suitcase or something like that. And when you go over to the show, 
100% already have your suit on. Do not just bring your suit, have it on. Um, and then have the suitcase with everything that you need. Any food that you need, your food scale, heels, jewelry if it's not already on. Um, if you need like your um, any kind of makeup to touch up if you're a female, um, anything you need for your pump, your water, if you need salt, um, anything like that, you need your ba your resistance bands or dumbbells, whatever it may be, take every single thing that you might possibly need with you in that suitcase, because I promise you, you'd much rather have too much um, than not have what you actually need. Yeah. And I think that the other aspect to this is that as much as I would love to tell you that every competitor that's back there is a good human being, um, it's just not the case. So <laughs> be okay with potentially having to part ways with something either being stolen from you or something like if, if you're very concerned about something, either, you know, call someone to meet you at the, like the, where the, I don't even know, the, the curtain, backstage yeah, yeah, yeah. like the, the curtain and hand it off to them if you are truly worried about it. Um, but if it's like bands, if it's dumbbells, there can be people that just walk away with them or, or pick them up because they forgot it or whatever. And so be understanding of that component as well. Um, and just be mindful of if you are you know, worried about it, get all the stuff back in the suitcase, get it zipped up. If you have like a lock on it, that'll help all that kind of stuff. Yeah. This is a good time if you need to bring headphones to zone out and just be able to be in your own zone, um, possibly a pillow or a blanket to sit on if you don't want to sit on the dirty ass ground um, and being able to bring the stuff that, again, is going to bring you into the zone, but have everything that you need to be able to get up on stage. Um, and then when you are backstage, they are going to call like. Um, all right, bikini needs to go ahead and get glazed or touched up or men's physique. Everyone go and get touched up classes A and B. Um, so keep your ears open for that as well to know when you need to go up, when your tan needs to be touched up, when your glazes and when they're lining you up to get on stage. Um, and that's where they'll also glaze. Um, I already said glaze you, but they'll glue your suit. If you are um, a female competitor, they'll glue the suit onto you um, to make sure there's no slips of anything. Um, and then with that, you can do your pump up when your coach has said it's good to go. Um, so just continue to keep in contact with your coach. If we haven't nailed that down enough, you can run through your posing a little bit, but also throughout show day, most of the time your coach is going to tell you to keep your feet up. Even if they want you to get a few steps in and get some movement in, it's also something where you don't need to spend an hour practicing posing, an hour standing on your feet and doing all these other things. Again, recovery and mitigating stress is the name of the game on show day. Yeah. The, the work is done. Uh, that's the, the big thing that I try to drive home is that the work is done. It's your time to now visualize. Um, I personally on show day, uh, really like to just listen to like jazz music, lo-fi beats, things that are going to be extremely peaceful for me and just closing my eyes and, and going through uh, the the posing, going through me winning my class, me being put into the box, me uh, winning the overall, all the things that would um, end the, the prep on a high note or, or, or walk away from that show in the perfect scenario. I visualize those things transpiring and putting myself into a peaceful place and, and getting my like heart rate under control, those different factors, because if the work that you've you've done so much to do before this should put you in a position where you have that confidence that those things are going to happen. And so if you are in that moment and you're like, oh, I, I still don't know, it's like, well, the work wasn't done before this because if you were really giving it absolutely everything, 110% every day prior to this, you would be at peace at whatever was, was gonna be on that stage. Yeah. And then I guess it would also be, well, as Austin said, if you don't know, ask. There will be someone with a clipboard or stacks of paper, and they will look very official. They are likely an expediter or a helper of the show. Feel free to ask them, hey, who's up right now? Or what does this look like? Or whatever it may be, um, just to make sure you know exactly what's going on. But um, before we wrap this up, there are some things that I gathered from a few first-time competitors that we had of just things that they either we had told them and they had actually experienced experience and they were like, oh yeah, that was helpful or just thoughts that they had. But before that, I think it's helpful to kind of talk through what to do in between prejudging and finals. Um, and especially if possibly you don't know how you placed or you weren't happy with where you were. Yeah. Um, so in between shows, we really push just resting, I, I think is the, the big thing. Uh, I know that it is um, potentially cool to see on Instagram of these uh, 110 pound girls going out for these 
burger and fries and what have you in between the show. I don't think that that's necessary. We take an approach of, of greater calculations on everything. So having a burger and fries would not fit into the protocols that we would have into place nine times out of 10. Um, so we're going to have scheduled meals on that front to keep your digestion adequately in the, in the proper position resting, potentially having the conversation of, of uh, evaluation with your coach. I, I like to get on potentially, like if, if things didn't go well, as, as Sue spoke to, I do like to get on calls and, and immediately kind of hash things out and see kind of what potentially uh, went south or, or something along those lines. Um, but I, I'd rather keep this in a more positive yes. light in general. Mm -hmm. Let's say that things do go well, the peak goes well. At that point, we want to get photos sent over to your coach. So the individual who's with you really, you know, talk to them about getting video and getting as, as quality of, of, video and, and pictures as we can because as like if you come off and you're like well i was i think i was second from the the center to the right or i was i was uh first to the left of the of the center you may be right you very well may be right but it will be better for us to understand and look at photos and see how the movement was and it, it is important to understand how much movement there was where you ended up who ended where and video and pictures is going to be very important and um, as close as the friend or, or family member that uh, can get is going to be helpful because the picture from the hundredth row back to the left is not going to be overly helpful to me uh, or any of us in, in grainy and those different factors. So as quality of photos as we can get is going to be a huge piece. Yeah. Well, now that I've gotten some food in me, I feel good. Maybe I, I placed really well. Should I just go and explore the city? Should I, what should I do? I would, I would nap. I would turn on some Seinfeld. I would turn on some office and just relax, um, spend time with the, the people who are, are there to support you. If you feel like you need a little bit of rest because maybe you only slept from 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. until 3, or maybe it's your first show, like we're talking about, you're very nervous, you're excited, and you don't sleep a whole lot, which is common. As much as we would love for you to sleep, it is. I know that for myself, it was something where it was like, I'm so excited. All I can think about is getting on that stage tomorrow. And as much as it was going to be good for me to sleep, my mentality and, and where I was was just not going to be, not going to allow me to do that. So I think that resting is going to be massive and, and not exploring the city. If you're wanting to explore the city, you've gone somewhere cool that you haven't been before, explore on Sunday. Uh, maybe take off work that Monday if you have that luxury and, and explore Monday too. And that'll be more fun because you likely will have some flexibility in food on Sunday. So you'll actually be able to enjoy the exploring a little bit more. Um, but I'll go through these th thoughts from a first-time competitor. So um, these are quotes from our competitors. One was, I honestly did not expect that I was going to be completely naked in front of like 10 people at a time when needing to tan. Like I knew I had to be naked and I knew you said that there was going to be people in the room, but I didn't know how intense it would all be. Um, another one was, I'm glad that we rent rented a car, even with staying so close to the venue and having the hair and makeup be at the same hotel. I could not have imagined taking so many Ubers to get the two coats of tan, going to the grocery store, getting a workout in, and other random bits and pieces. In the long run, I saved money, time, and stress. The next one was getting a hot plate from Target was the best thing ever. I know that a microwave would have worked, but it made my food taste so much better. I was able to boil the potatoes, make whole eggs, and not have to eat dry chicken. 100% worth it. Um, so she said that she got a $20 hot plate from Target. So that's a great one. There's tons of hot plates on Amazon. Tasty has a hot plate. Um, or you could bring a griddle too or buy a griddle because they're like $10. So that's super easy to grab at the grocery store. Um, another one said fly Southwest if you can, because you have two free checked bags, which is always helpful when you're traveling heavy. Um, someone else said peeing isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Dixie cups work just fine and you can easily get your tan touched up. I know you voiced this, but I was stressing about it the whole weekend. So if you do pee on yourself or mess up your tan, they likely can fix it, but you know, try not to. Um, and then another one was bring your own sheets and towels for tan and post shower. Um, it was so helpful to not have to worry about getting charged at the hotel um, and to be able to have that ready to go. So it is something where, as we know, a hotel 
sheets and towels are mostly white. And so when you lay on that with your tan, if you stain them, you can be charged for your room. So I personally always bring our own sheets, um, our own pillowcases, our own blanket, um, so that we don't mess anything up at the hotel. And then also bringing my own towel because I don't want to then give them back a, t a towel that's covered in a f fake spray tan. Um, and something else you can do, just a side tip, is bring um, like cellophane or something to put on the toilet seat so you don't uh, – stain the toilet seat. But if you don't bring that, then bring like baby wipes or something. So immediately when you get up from the toilet, wipe it down because first a stained toilet seat looks really bad, but also you can get charged for that and you want to be able to sidestep it. Yeah. And another thing, let the friend or significant other or family member do that as well because it could, you know, rub. You, you could screw up your tan that way too. Yes. Just being as mindful as possible. Yeah. Austin, do you have any last tips before we wrap it up? Uh, I wish I would have heard this the first time I competed. That's my, <laughs> like, I mean. Yeah. Oof. Same here. They would have saved me a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, stress I didn't understand that I would experience. And a lot of, <laughs> excuse me, I've been sick. Um, a lot of grief. <laughs> um, <laughs> a lot of grief during the process. So honestly, just take all this to heart. Listen back to this. Um, you know, obviously this will be broken up into different timestamps. If you want to watch it on YouTube, all those things. And if you want to go back and just kind of listen to different segments to kind of clarify things, I would highly recommend it because the more prepared you are going into this experience, the better you're going to feel, the more enjoyable it's going to be, honestly, like it can be stressful. It can be all these things, but at the end of the day, you want it to be enjoyable, right? You want to be a as much as you want a partner or friend to be with you, that's a good partner and friend and they're kind and patient and understanding. You still have to exist as a good human and also <laughs> do that as well. And the more prepared you are, the better you can be and honestly just be more pleasant to be around. And right? be There's more nothing excited worse. going into it all. Yeah, like be excited, be a pleasant human and, and be prepared because at, when you're looking back on it, you don't, <laughs> you know, you don't want to be that, that bitter like, you know, person that, that sort of regrets the experience or um, understands that they were kind of an unpleasant person to be around the whole time. So yeah, right. um, no fun. Yeah, that's all I really wanted to say. I wish I had this when I when I first started to compete, honestly, because yeah. it would have saved so much time and, and stress. Last thing I'll say, don't be afraid to bring a travel squatty potty if you know that helps you. Um, but also in the show notes will be a YouTube video going over your whole show day look um, because that's much better represented in a video than going through it on a podcast. So we will have that linked below. Um, but if there is another topic or part of being a first time competitor, or you have extra questions that we haven't addressed in the first three episodes of this series please, please, please go to the show notes. There is a form that you can fill out and submit questions because we want to make sure that you feel the most prepared and the most excited going into show day. So not only you can possibly make it a little bit easier on yourself, um, but also just be able to have a better experience as a whole um, because exactly what they've both said, these are all learning from experience um, and they were hard lessons to learn. So hopefully you don't make the same mistakes. But thanks so much for watching and or listening and we'll catch you in the next episode.